This is Echo 3, and let's discuss a mission to Lathe. This is going to be a bit more of a traditional style rocket and mission. We're going to go with an Apollo style landing and return, meaning we're going to have a separate lander that goes down to the surface and then rendezvous up with our return craft that will take us back to Kerbin. In this case, I am going with a massive rocket. To get to the Joule system and get to Lathe and return back to Kerbin takes about 8,100, 8,200 meters per second of delta V. And to land on Lathe and get back into orbit, I need to count on about 3,000 meters per second of delta V. And these are kind of the minimum numbers I need to work with. So we're getting our initial stage here into orbit. And then from there, we will plot our maneuver out to the Joule system. And it can take over 2,000 meters per second to get to Joule, unless, of course, you take advantage of gravity assists. Now, these numbers I've just thrown out don't take into account gravity assist and aero braking. And hopefully, we'll be able to do a little bit of that. So our booster stage here has a starting thrust to weight ratio of 1.2 and about 3,000 meters per second. The second stage has about 1,500 meters per second of delta V. And in the middle there, my transfer stage, my cruiser stage, it's all liquid fuel with 8,344 meters per second of delta V. And what I did is I stacked a bunch of liquid fuel tanks in there, and then I put a fairing over it just to, to cover it all, and then I used struts to keep it in place. And then I've only got four of the nuclear, the nerve engines there, that gives me a starting thrust to weight ratio for that stage of about 0.1. And that's fine if I'm using high enough orbits. Those engines have a specific impulse of 800 seconds, so really handy to use. I use the in-game maneuver tool to get to Joule, and I put a mid-course correction to get me a periapsis about the same as Lathe's. So now I'm going to capture here around Joule and straighten my orbit or I'm, I'm trying to correct the inclination so I'm on the same plane as Lathe and I did that on my far node there. The further away you are from the planet or moon, the cheaper the inclination change is going to be. Now what I'm trying to do is see if I can uh, use a bit of a gravity assist off of Lathe to save some delta V. It's going to take a lot of delta V to capture unless my orbit is much more similar to Lathe's, which I'm trying to do. And a little finicky here, but I think I'm going to find something that's going to work. Ultimately, I had really wanted to do more with gravity assists, but the game kept crashing on me or freezing up when I tried to reload one of my saves. So I just decided I'm going to go very traditional, um, use the brute force method, just have lots of delta V, and I'll be, I'll be fine. So you can see I'm trying to work my closest approach here with my gravity assist so I can get a good second encounter with Lathe. And that's what we have set up here. And then with the second encounter, well, when we burn here, the second encounter with Lathe will let us capture for a cheaper amount. We won't have to change our velocity as much. Right now you can see actually we were set to fly right at Lathe and I'll need to burn radially and just bring our periapsis out just a little bit. There we are. So you can see that we are using Lathe as a gravity assist. So we're coming around Lathe here and our velocity, our direction changes and because your speed and direction together make your velocity. So that's what changes how I'm orbiting. Now I need to actually get into orbit here. If I don't make this correction, then we'll actually slam into Joule because we'll have lost too much uh, speed and that'll, that'll be kind of interesting. So gravity assist can be helpful. They can also really screw you over. You may have noticed this if you've been around the Duna system and Ike can fling you out into interplanetary space if you're not careful uh, interacting with its sphere of influence. So here we are, we have set up our capture burn around Lathe, and that should set us up pretty well. 
it's going to be a, a fairly costly burn, but this craft has gobs of Delta V. I don't really have to worry about about that or being less efficient uh, using the alarm clock just to set up my reminder. So I will get here at the appropriate time, and we do. Now let's make this burn and capture around lathe. I probably won't capture all in one burn here. I'm just kind of seeing what I need. It'll be a little bit more efficient if I do this over a course of uh, two or three burns just because of the low thrust to weight ratio of this craft. But that's fine. Once you're captured around an object, you can take your time and adjust your orbit as needed. Lathe does not have a lot of land area to use. And if you want to try landing something like a, a plane, like a single stage to orbit craft, which is what I intended to do, and I tried several times to make that mission work, just was having a hard time with my game crashing and the game freezing. I just gave up on it and went with this craft instead. Maybe at some point I will try getting that to work. I'm just not sure. I'm using the mod trajectories here to help me land on a piece of land. This craft isn't designed to land in Lathe's oceans, so I'm using a mod to help with that. You can just use your orbital line and quick save and quick load and probably get close. I just wanted to get it right the first time, which this mod let me do. There's enough of a land area there, and because I'm using more of a traditional style lander as opposed to a space plane, I can get away with landing on some rougher terrain. That was one of my issues with my SSTO that I had made, just trying to find a good spot to land. And well, the quick load and quick save were really getting me, and I just got frustrated with that and just gave up on that whole craft. But it was really cool. Um, what I had done that time was I had actually launched the SSTO into orbit around Kerbin. I refilled it, and it had a docking port on the back, and I used a nuclear powered, uh, you know, the liquid fuel nuclear engines there to act as my cruiser stage to take the craft to. Lathe, and I used gravity assist to get into orbit. Um, then I deorbited the craft, it was, and anyway, struggled. I uh, probably spent three or four hours trying to get that to work. And I, anyway, ultimately, I didn't. I have hours of footage. M maybe I can get it to work. Maybe the game will cooperate with me, and I can show you that mission. This one, and it, it works out great. And I'm going to land here first time. So Lathe's atmosphere is much cooler than Kerbin. So even though it's about as dense as Kerbin's, I can cool off my craft and not have as much issues with the entry heating. I did use some of my landing stage engines here to help kill off a little bit of my speed. And I'll need just a little bit more, a little bit of a puff with those engines. With the parachutes, it won't be Parachutes aren't going to be quite enough for this craft. I'm just a little heavy, but I have the Delta V to spare. Also good for me because it'll make the craft a little lighter. My thrust to weight ratio with the tanks full is about 1.2, and this will give me a little better starting thrust to weight ratio for my takeoff. There we go, and this craft has landed just fine. It wants to slide a little bit, so I'm not going to be able to quick save here. But we are safely on the surface, we can do whatever science we want to do. This is a sandbox game, so there really isn't much point of science, but if this were another game, that'd be a lot of fun. But we did safely land on Lathe, and this island is a pretty good one. There are some flat spots that you can choose. Now we're going to set our cruiser stage as our target. And that's going to be what takes us back to Kerbin. This craft is just our lander and get back into orbit craft. It has nothing to do with getting back to Kerbin. So I've got this, my landing stage. I've got a little bit left with fuel in it. I will take off initially with it. And then I've got six spark engines, I think, on the bottom of this. Six or eight, I'm not even really remember. Uh, it might be eight spark engines on the bottom of this. And... Uh, those are the swivel engines there on the side mounted boosters. They're nice, they're quite heavy, but they're uh, nice enough because of their gimbal. I would like to have used the dart engines, but they don't have gimbal, and this just makes my landing a little easier to control. 
So we'll just take this stage back up into orbit. And it's, it's a two stage, so I'll have two different stages using the Spark engines. The Spark engines are actually pretty good because they operate decently in an atmosphere and they're very lightweight. So that's why I ended up going with them. They do have a little bit of gimbal, so that helps as well. Uh, again, the Aerospike engine just doesn't have that as an option. It's a, it's a great engine at only one ton and a uh, very good specific impulse. It's just if you also need gimbal, it doesn't have that. So a lot of different trade-offs with the engines and why you might pick one over another. Now we are in orbit. So once we're in orbit, we can just set up our rendezvous with the return craft. So I'm just moving around my maneuver node and I draw out my prograde marker till it touches the other craft's marker and see till I get a pretty close approach. I'm shooting for less than two kilometers. Then what I like to do is burn on the target side of the retrograde marker and just get close. In this case, I didn't watch what I was doing too close and I have to come back to the craft. But we've, got, we've got the fuel spare and we're not going to dock. All I got to do is rendezvous and then I will transfer the crew over in EVA. This works fine in a game too, unless you need to recover the craft back on Kerbin. There are a few contracts where you need to recover a craft from a particular location and bring it back to Kerbin. Sandbox game, I don't have that. Now we're just going to eject Lathe and get into a pretty high jewel orbit that avoids any of the moons. I am not going to use a gravity assist to get back to Kerbin. I, I was just having a lot of problems with the game freezing on me and so I just, just gonna avoid that just take advantage of my raw Delta V that this craft has which is just ridiculous I way overbuilt the craft but I knew it was going to complete the mission so that's why I did this but you know when you know your craft is way over budgeted it's way overbuilt you know you're going to be able to complete the mission and that can be a fun thing in itself as well sometimes when you're trying to play on the margins, it can get frustrating when you just aren't able to do it, which is what I was, one of my issues there. Just, anyway, this craft does it. I didn't have to worry about too many quick saves and quick loads. I didn't have to worry about gravity assist. It's just able to get it all done for me. I do look forward to showing you the other craft I had built. A pretty sweet mission. I, I like going to Lathe that way. The nice thing about having an aircraft with the air breathing engines is you can explore a lot more of Lathe, assuming you can find decent landing spots. You might need to build uh, a plane that can land on the water, but with the air breathing engines you can very efficiently travel around Lathe. You can even use the breaking ground rotor parts if you want to make a propeller plane. The downside is you can't really use the propellers and time warp, so if you want to explore a lot of Lathe, it's just not a very timely way to do that. The poles have ice on them on Lathe, so they are a very flat place to land. So I do recommend trying to land there if that works into your mission as well. Great place to land uh, an SSTO if you want to do that. Now we're returning to Kerbin. I have returned to Kerbin many times if you want to see how to do that. I didn't use the maneuver editor uh, as much for this. It was just struggling. It wasn't giving me a good a good route back. Matter of fact, it planned a maneuver several hundred days in the past. That's obviously no good for me. So I just went ahead and ejected Jewel, got my periapsis down to Kerbin's height, and then made a few other maneuvers in interplanetary space to get an intercept with Kerbin. And that's all I needed to do. You know, you can see my Delta V budget is still very good. We'll eventually just deorbit this craft and land and bring our Kerbals back safely and that'll work well. So about 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed. If you are one of those and you enjoy my content, would you let me know by subscribing to my channel? Also, uh, leaving a like helps the YouTube algorithms know that this is a good video. So if you liked it, uh, please go ahead and do that. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me for this Mission to Lathe. I will see you next time.